Now let's jump to another aspect of this pharmacodynamic and that is combined effect of drugs. So combined effect of drugs, what if we combine the two drugs? So first aspect in a very important and frequently asked in examination is synergism. Like synergism we, we can know as far as general knowledge also. Synergism if we combine the two drugs, so they increase or complement each other and produce its different actions. So this synergism having two things, they may produce additive actions and they may produce supra additive actions. Now what is additive? Additive is as simple as additions. If we are giving two drugs, the effect would be of multiplication of two drugs only. So, uh, okay. Okay. So, additive aspect of synergism. So, we are introducing two drugs. So, they produces the effect or the response in the same directions and response simply adds up. So, effect of drug A plus B is equal to effect of drug A plus effect of drug B. There are certain examples like aspirin plus paracetamol which is being used as in painkiller medicines, nitrous oxide and halothane which are general anesthetic medicines you can remember few of them, antihypertensive which is most commonly used as an amlodipine and etanolol, etanolol is a beta blocker and amlodipine is a calcium channel blocker, metformin and glibenclamide which is being used in diabetes and epinephrine and theophylline, ephedrine and theophylline in bronchodilators. So these are some of the examples of additive mechanisms. Now these are examples of supra additive mechanisms. Supra additive means if we combine the two drugs, their effect would be greater than the simply additions. Initially we saw the simple additions. Here we are saying A plus B is more than drug A plus effect of drug B, right? So it's a supra additive action it is called as potentiation also and you need to remember the examples these are very important okay so they are asking in vivas that uh, name few drugs which are having supra additive actions and we'll see and we'll discuss in each of the chapters when these drugs will come acetylcholine and physostigmine okay these are cholinergic drugs and increases the cholinergic systems levodopa and carbidopa okay these are used in CNS and Parkinsonism. Sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. These are antibiotic medications. Very helpful. Antihypertensive drugs, enalapril and hydrochlorothiazide. You know, so these are some of the examples of supra additive. Right now, it would be difficult to remember for you, but, but there is no option because we have not gone through into the chapters. One more action of combining the drugs. Right now, all till now we saw if we combine the two drugs that produce its additive actions or super additive actions. But now we are seeing the drugs, if we combine the two drugs, there is decrease in the response or the no response and that is called as antagonism. So antagonism is one drug decreases or abolish the action of other. So that is called as antagonist. So if we combine drug A and drug B, there might be a nil response okay so that is called as antagonism one drug decreases or abolishes the response of other so effect of drug a plus b is equal to less than the effect of drug a plus drug b now this antagonism is of different types first let's see about physical antagonism like physical antagonism that is depends upon the drug's physical property for an example charcoal we use this charcoal in many type of poisoning why because the charcoal prevents the absorption of these toxic drugs from the intestine or from the stomach so this charcoal having absorptive property of alkaloids and prevent their absorption so both are physically antagonist and that kind might be useful clinically in alcohol or poisoning so if patient has taken more of an alkaloid we can use this charcoal this charcoal absorbs or prevents the absorption of this alkaloid and helps in patients so these are a physical antagonism that is clinically useful 
सेकेंड इज केमिकल एंटागोनिज्म द एंटागोनिज्म और द ऑपोजिट इफेक्ट्स इज ड्यू टू इट्स केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सो एग्जाम्पल इज चिलेडिंग एजेंट्स देर आर सम चिलेडिंग एजेंट्स विथ कॉम्प्लेक्स विथ हैवी मेटल सो इफ पेशेंट इज हैविंग हैवी मेटल पॉइजनिंग वी आर गिविंग दिस चिलेटिव एजेंट्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ सम केमिकल इंटरेक्शन दे मेक थिंग्स न्यूट्रलाइज एंड देर वुड बी नो इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस केमिकल थर्ड इज फिजियोलॉजिकल और फंक्शनल एंटागोनिज्म इंपॉर्टेंट टर्मिनोलॉजी फिजियोलॉजिकल और फंक्शनल एंटागोनिज्म सो हियर देर इज ऑपोजिट इफेक्ट ऑन द पर्टिक्युलर रिस्पॉन्स फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल ऑन ब्रोंकिल स्मूथ मसल्स हिस्टामिन प्रोड्यूसिस ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रिक्शंस वाइल एड्रीनालिन प्रोड्यूसिस ब्रोंको डायलेटेशंस सो एड्रीनालिन डायलेट द ब्रोंकस हिस्टामिन कंस्ट्रिक्स द ब्रोंकस सो इन केस ऑफ एलर्जी वेर हिस्टामिन ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रिक्स वी आर गिविंग इन ट्रीटमेंट एज एन एड्रीनालिन टू ब्रोंको डायलेट सो बोथ प्रोड्यूसिस देर रिस्पॉन्स बाय डिफरंट मेकेनिजम्स ऑफ डिफरंट रिसेप्टर्स स्टील द रिस्पॉन्स इज ऑपोज लाइक फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल हिस्टामिन प्रोड्यूसिस ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रिक्शन थ्रू हिस्टामिनिक रिसेप्टर्स एंड एड्रीनालिन प्रोड्यूसिस ब्रोंको डायलेटेशन बाय वर्किंग ऑन बीटा रिसेप्टर्स सो बोथ आर हैविंग ऑपोजिट एक्शंस बट द रिसेप्टर्स आर डिफरेंट एंड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज फिजियोलॉजिकल और फंक्शनल एंटागोनिज्म एंड लास्टली द रिसेप्टर एंटागोनिज्म एंड वील सी इन डिटेल अबाउट दिस रिसेप्टर एंटागोनिज्म नाउ मेजर दिस रिसेप्टर एंटागोनिज्म इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट वन कॉम्पिटिटिव एंड सेकेंड नॉन कॉम्पिटिटिव एंटागोनिज्म नाउ लेट सी वन बाय वन ऑल दिस पॉइंट what is competitive antagonism of receptor and what is non competitive so here we are dealing with receptor right so what is the first point antagonist binds with the same receptor as the agonist so here for an example is the receptor and this is our agonist and this is our antagonist so here antagonist is binding to the receptors like antagonist is binding to the receptors so that agonist cannot bind to its place so it's like a simple uh, uh, case of musical chair when one person takes a place of other so other one cannot sit at their place right so antagonist takes a place of agonist so now the agonist cannot work on that side and that is why it is called as competition that is clear competition for a single side but here in this case of non competitive antagonism here the non competitive antagonists binds at other side right for an example non competitive antagonist binds at other side and still prevents agonist binding to that side or prevents the if if even agonist binds there is no response so here it binds to another side of receptors right so here antagonist binds at other another side here antagonist binds at same side so first point is clear antagonist resembles chemically with agonist so here there is competitions and both agonist and antagonist are chemically resemblant here there is no resemblance because antagonist binding and all together other side there is no resemblance between agonist and antagonist now third point parallel rightward shift of dose response curve and flattening of dose response curve now what are this now this we will understand by this figure so here this is a response of a drug now if we increase the concentration of antagonist if we increase the concentration of antagonist there is right side shift of the curve still if we increase the concentration of antagonist there is rightward shifting of the curve so what it says the potency of drug decreases if we increase the concentration of antagonist but what happens here in this case here this is a response and if we add an antagonist there is more flattening or decrease the height 
still if we increase the concentration of antagonist there is more flattening there is more decrease in the height so here the efficacy decreases so efficacy decreases by increasing the concentration of antagonist so here it is says rightward shift of dose response curve and this is flattening of dose response curve decrease in the potency here decrease in the efficacy this is competitive antagonism and this is non-competitive antagonism so third thing is now clear parallel rightward shift of drc in competitive and flattening of dose response curve in non-competitive fourth point very important same maximum response can be attained by increase the dose of agonist and maximal response is suppressed now what it says it says if we increase the concentration of agonist here so if we use the concentration of agonist this agonist will kick out the antagonist it will attach here and produces the response right so it's like a same thing of musical chair if more people comes so they will take out that person sitting there and there will be increase in the response so if we increase the concentration of agonist here it will increase the response by kicking out the antagonist from the binding site but here there is no relationship between antagonist and agonist so if you still increase the concentration of agonist there won't be any effect on antagonist because antagonist is binding at altogether different site and producing different actions right here they are competing for only same site so here the antagonism is called surmountable antagonism because now you can achieve again and here it is called as unsurmountable antagonism so here if the antagonism is achieved you cannot revert it back by increasing the concentration to agonist here you can revert it back by increasing the concentration of agonist fifth point intensity of response depends upon the concentration of both agonist and antagonist and maximum response depends only on concentration of antagonist it's quite similar to the previous point where if we increase or decrease the concentration of agonist there is different responses but here there won't be any effect because antagonist binding at altogether different sites now we need to remember examples of this competitive antagonism these are acetylcholine and atropine atropine is an antagonist of acetylcholine naloxone is an antagonist of morphine so these are examples you need to remember and here bucuculine is an antagonist or the non competitive antagonist of diazepam so this is how you can differentiate competitive and non competitive antagonism there is also third type of antagonism and that is called as irreversible or non equilibrium antagonism now what is this it is kind of a non competitive antagonism but with some of the features of competitive as well let's see sometime the antagonist binds with very high affinity or the covalent bond okay so binds with very strong covalent bonds and dissociates very slowly again okay, very slowly it gets dissociate so this is how an irreversible or non competitive or uh, sorry non equilibrium antagonism is achieved what will be the dose response curve so dose response curve initially would be like competitive antagonism this is like a normal if we increase the concentration of antagonist it will shift right side but then it will start flattening okay so it is a mixture of both initially it will shift the dose to the right side but then if we increase the concentration of antagonist there is flattening of a curve so this is a combination drc we achieved in this irreversible antagonism so it's a type of non competitive antagonism it's a type of non competitive antagonism only that is called as non equilibrium or irreversible antagonism and you need to remember one example that is phenoxybenzamine a drug that is alpha adrenergic receptor blocker is an non equilibrium antagonist of adrenaline so on alpha receptor pheno phenoxybenzamine binds irreversibly or non equilibrium kind of antagonism is been produced where it's bind with very high affinity and strong covalent bond 
so that initially DRC shifts on right side and then after DRC height decreases. So that was all about antagonism.